We jump on out to Disneyland and the West Coast, where Disneyland Resort has announced that a certain attraction is on its way back. The Red Car Trolley over at California Adventure. Los Angeles Daily News reports that the Red Car Trolley that added an essential burst of kinetic energy to Buena Vista Street and a nostalgic nod to the entry Esplanade's 1920s Los Angeles theme will soon be returning to Disney California Adventure after a three-year absence. Disneyland teased a summer return of the Red Car Trolley to California Adventure's Buena Vista Street on the official Disney Parks TikTok account. And of course, the Red Car Newsboys Trolley Show that was canceled in 2019 will not return with the red car trolley this summer you can cry i will cry katrina might not be a high capacity attraction but what does the red car trolley mean to you of all people and uh yeah. should others consider hopping aboard this little trolley that uh trots on down the street at <laughs> california adventure this summer i just can't believe it's been three years that's nuts right uh, yeah. I was like, I had to think about it for a second. I was like, yeah, yeah, it was close for a while. But I, mean, I loved I loved it. I think it's really fun to, ju it's just like what they said in the article, right? It's a kinetic energy. You walk in, you see it move around, you hear like the ding ding, and then you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, like it's just, it's moving, kind of like Main Street, right? So you go to Main Street, you see the trolley moving, you see the horses, you see like the fire engine kind of moving around, and you're kind of like, this is really fun. And I think the red trolley just does that for DCA. I think it just creates this, like old timey feel that you would understand what Walt Disney was going through when mm. he would come when he had a suitcase and a dream. And uh, <laughs> see what I did there. Way, way to tie it all together. So, I like <laughs> and uh, so I and so for me, I think it's fun to ride every now and then. I I wouldn't say like to get from point A to point B. It's very efficient. No, but it's fun just to kind of go in and just like ride it once and then you know have. But it's just like it's just fun to see it and like see little kids just mm. think think it's just like it's a huge thing just to ride up and down DCA and stuff but I am heartbroken about the show mm. that is the one thing I'm like the most depressed about those news boys but it's nice to see it back because just it needed it needs movement like right now it's just it's it's fun to go into DCA but when you see the little trolley come up and down it's just it's like a little warm hug I never thought we'd get it back, quite honestly. No, I, I thought I, I felt like I, I felt like it had to because they built that whole station in Avengers Campus. You know, I really felt like they were planning it, but I guess a lot of things have changed. I don't know. It, it just seemed like one of those things that was going to go to Yesterland and go by the <laughs> wayside, and we weren't going to sure. talk about it again Sweeping because it's rug, like no walkway. one acknowledged it uh, for mm -hmm. the longest time, and I thought we're never going to see it again and they're going to act like it doesn't exist. Thankfully, yeah. it didn't go the way of the people mover. Yeah. I mean, they even they even took out the frozen float from Paint the Night for that attraction, if you think right. about it, because yeah. it was so tall that it that they were going to have to remove all the wires that go over Buena Vista Street, but they got rid of the frozen float kind instead, which is kind of <laughs> impressive, actually. Now I just really want them to bring back the five and dime car. Mm. Yeah. And have they those guys have come out exit, on the car. You know? Yeah. yeah. Or entrance, yeah. entrance and exit. That car used to be dedicated for the Year of a Million Dreams. It was called the Dream Wagon. That's what we called it. Wow. And uh, it was part of the Year of a Million Dreams, part of the Dream Squad, uh, where that was the vehicle we put the Grand Marshal in for the start of the Disneyland Parade every day. And we would follow behind it after we <laughs> awarded somebody the Grand Marshal uh, ship. We put them Grand in there. Grand Marshal ship. Grand Marshal ship. And I would <laughs> walk behind them like doing... This. <laughs> Basically security work, making sure that we got all kinds of photos of them along their parade route, and then um, they would get the night stay in the Disneyland Dream Suite. <gasps> wow. Rest in peace. I wish I knew I you back then, because, yeah. uh, man, I, like, hey, I would have had a shoe in. What can I say? <laughs> man in high places. <laughs> I get things done. It was, uh, yeah, very special car, so it's really cool to see it I'm now. I'm glad it's repurposed. Completely repurposed for yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Aww. They repainted it and everything. I Beautiful love that story. Car. Yeah, what can I say? Heartwarming what this show's all about and dreams heartwarming and dreams touching you yeah something thank you I'm glad you specified where we were touching <laughs> right here <laughs> something that won't touch you right there probably the magic key annual pass holder lawsuit going on Ooh. Ooh, yes San Bernardino's son reports a federal judge has allowed a Disneyland pass holder lawsuit to move forward that claims the Anaheim theme park misled and deceived its most loyal fans by artificially limiting capacity and restricting reservations. According to court documents, the lawsuit alleges that the Magic Key plaintiff purchased a $1,399 Disneyland Dream Key annual pass with no blockout dates in September 2021, but was unable to make 
theme park reservations for certain dates in November 2021. The plaintiff's attorneys are seeking to have the case certified as a class action by the U.S. District Court, a step that has not yet happened. Disneyland stands by their initial response that magic key terms and conditions are clear. Tyler, in your estimation, how do you think a lawsuit like this might impact the Magic Key Annual Pass program moving forward, especially if that plaintiff is successful? You know, I got to be honest, I actually don't think that it will impact much at all because uh, if you think about it, they haven't been selling Dream Keys for quite a while now, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of the main reasons is this actual lawsuit. Mm. Um, so they're not going to sell any new Dream Keys until they figure this out, I feel like, and then... Um, you know, at the end of the day, they really just ha even if they wanted to bring the dream keys back, all they'd have to do is just change the wording on their website and um, and to be a little more clear, whatever, not to say the words no blockout dates like that's really it's going to be the same thing for everybody. I mean, I, if you know, if they make a class action, maybe some people will get some money out of this, but I don't see a world where they change the way that the dream key works. It just I just don't think it's going to happen. They're going to just get rid of the dream key or change the wording on the website. I think that's really how it's going to impact people. More than that, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think that um, potentially there might be something in the works that they've been awfully quiet about renewals right. this year mm -hmm. already. Yeah. We're getting so close, right? Yeah. I mean, what is it? August was yeah. uh, when people were able to first start purchasing these things. And so um, we're getting questions ourselves. People are asking us, what have you heard about renewals? We haven't. Yep. Um, there's been some rumors out there, uh, I guess a, a chat log between a Disney cast member and somebody maybe on the app and they were asking about renewals and the cast member on the app said something to the effect of well you know it's one of those things where um, renewals aren't going to be available but it was left up for interpretation as to do you mean right now do you mean in august do you mean you guys just aren't ready yet i get the feeling that they're not ready yet because no doubt those prices are probably going to go way up oh, okay. oh, renewal time. they're going to add those wordings like they did it for genie plus right like you're going to have mm. like given one to two options like, possibly a week yeah. to get a reservation not meaning it's going to be a weekend or something even though and then they're going to get rid of like the blockout dates mm -hmm. no, blockouts. no blockouts no blockouts no such thing i'm actually <laughs> surprised that it that this lawsuit continues moving forward because i Me too. i do feel that to be honest I, I i kind of side with disney a little bit where they were pretty clear about what was going to happen i felt like and i almost feel like this is somebody that found like a little loophole and, and they were then, and you know, obviously I think a lot of dream key holders are upset because if you look at like the summer months, I mean, a lot of weekends are already gone. Like, and I get it. I know that's frustrating, but um, I just don't see, a, I, I per, I'm shocked that it's going forward because I don't know if I see a reality where they win. Uh, I just think I, it's hard. Like, I mean, if you're from Northern California, from, you know, outside areas where you have to plan your vacation, but you have an annual pass because you know you're going to go and you're a planner, like I'm a planner and dining's already hard to get. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure when you're traveling, you get that weekend. And if that weekend's gone, then your whole trip is ruined. And so, like, I can see that in a perspective of, you know, someone that's maybe in Northern California that comes to visit every now and then. But then, like, for you and me, it's fine because we can just show up in, like, you know, the morning of or the night before to see if there's an opening. And we're like, oh, God, there's an opening. Okay, let's grab it. And yeah. then then check dining to see if we can get, like, a Carthay reservation. You know? <laughs> and then we're like, oh, God. And then so, like, that's, like, what we do. But... You know, there's people that have to plan that have like kids and like, you know, outside. And so it's frustrating if you spend like, how, how much was it again? Like eight, it's like $1,400. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you spent like $1,400 and you had like a family of, you know, like three or whatever, like that's expensive and you're not able to do the weekends wherein your kids are able to actually have like a full day to go and you're like trying to plan it and just make sure and like, you know, things happen. You might have like a scatterbrain, you forgot your reservation, whatever. It's just... I get why like they're following through with this and I'm kind of glad because like yeah. Disney kind of needed like a little kick in the butt for this. Especially with the thing that they're pointing out uh, as far as like what I guess is like the loophole in this conversation that you know you can't make a reservation and yet there's like tickets available and reservations available for just general public so you would have the option then mm -hmm. to like pay for your pass but then if you want to go on a specific day like pay for a day ticket. 
Yeah. You know, Ridiculous. and that is that inconsistency yep, that's of their like, big gripe. Yeah. That yep. is the big thing where they're like, hey, if you have this reservation and ticket that's not being sold because it's still available, why can't a pass holder just absorb that essentially? Yeah. Or at least give it a, at a certain point the day of the saying day like of, at like, like, this and this time it'll just go to all the annual pass holders or to dream keys or whatever. And yeah. then that's when dream keys can have the flexibility to be like, yes, let's go. And you know? make it the park hopping cutoff time. Yeah. You know, like I mean, they by, did it over one, to no one... the annual pass holders yeah. for Epcot. So they like, they had reservations available and they just let you have like an extra reservation for Epcot to get you in. Like, was it last, last two weeks ago when we were there? So, like there was just like an influx of people and we're like, Oh, you can, you can come in. That's cool. Great. So we got to meet up with some friends, but still, like, I think Disneyland should do that, too. Open up the gates! <laughs> <laughs> well, you let us know what you think about this Magic Key Pass Holder lawsuit. No doubt a lot of people that don't have Magic Keys are like, enough already. Get out of here. What are you doing? Spoke we gotta pay. Rats. Get out of here. Yeah, we gotta pay full <laughs> price for a day. You're complaining about paying one price for an entire year. Yeah. Grr. <laughs> let us know what uh, you have on your mind when it comes to that Magic Key key annual pass holder lawsuit and whether or not you think it's really going to go forward and how it might just impact the overall program. Moving along now, Disneyland has announced when we are finally going to get something back in the Fantasyland Theater right there back next to Toontown's main entrance. Guess what? Tale of the Lion King, which they had previously announced was coming to that stage, is now on its way officially as of May 28th. May 28th is the day that we will be seeing the Tale of the Lion King take to the stage at Fantasyland Theater, finally. And uh, no doubt this is a exciting celebration of Lion King. I mean, no doubt the music itself mm -hmm. is spectacular, has long endured, and um, can't wait to see something finally back there in that space after so long. Sabina Gone is making the magical map, soon to be with us, Tale of the Lion King. Do you plan on seeing it, first of all, and second of all, if you had to put a show back there that wasn't The Lion King, what would you throw back there on that stage? I actually didn't get to see the first iteration of this show um, when it was put out to promote the live action Lion King. Um, but I'm definitely going to see it. It's, it's like you said, the music itself is going to get my butt Timeless, in that right? seat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I hope that they bring in some of, you know, the like... Um, uh, like lion sort of like costumes and stuff into the the attraction. I, I love my parade Simba. Mm. Awesome. Oh yes. Uh, just like put him on stage. Let's go. Um, yeah. No, I I'm excited. I'll, I'll check it out. Um, you know, I think they're we're having that final finally this resurgence of live entertainment and to see a lot of performers get back to work is so exciting so that in that regard I'm, I'm so stoked um but i kind of do feel like it might be like a placeholder show especially because mickey and the magical Max map is not coming back mm -hmm. i can definitely see them doing an encanto um mm -hmm. stage show because be there are fun. so many songs in that and people would want to sing along to bruno um i think that would be the more likely thing than the treehouse being re rethemed in Kunkel, for sure. That sounds interesting. Very possible. The and, different uh, layers of like how they had the map yeah, like, for the house. The, the house. The yeah, you already got that screen. Mm -hmm. Things open. Layered for screen. Us. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, Might be on to something there. <laughs> you know, we posted earlier this week, speaking of the Tarzan's treehouse and the overhaul happening there, the bridge is gone from one side of the tree to the other, and it looks like well, the- that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it yeah. looks like the step side <laughs> that you go up the tree is being dismantled as we speak, oh, so. no! It's happening. Oh. It's happening, yeah. folks. I mean, if you think about it, it's a huge roadblock for that. It is. Tra There's mm -hmm. so much traffic like that goes through that area. It is and then everybody puts so their much. strollers yeah. over there and like yeah. around it, and they always have to keep moving it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, Adventureland is- Adventureland is like clogged up enough already and then like that specific area is just always miserable to be honest so mm -hmm. you know I don't know I don't know how many of you knew about it but there was that face in the side of the tree trunk that looked like Jabba the Hutt that's what, that's, said, that's what I'm gonna miss oh yeah Bye, I'm gonna miss that part the Bye, most Jabba. Bye, Jabba. maybe you they'll like the cut most, it out Jabba. and they'll put it like Somewhere, I don't know, Indiana Jones or Indiana something. Indiana Jones, yes. <laughs> shove it in I mean, there uh, somewhere. <laughs> it's Lucas, it would work, I guess. Sh sure. Shove it up where the old parking lot sign for Eeyore is. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah in, in the queue. Chuck it over there. Do that. <laughs> That's a good idea. 
love it. <laughs> well, very good. Looking forward to not only seeing the Tale of the Lion King debuting on May the 28th at the Fantasyland Theater, same day as Fantasmic's return. So I got um, my reservation in. Oh, you'll yeah. be there. I will be there for Fantasmic. <laughs> very good. Yeah, nice. big big entertainment from one end of the park to the other. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Yeah, great to finally have all of that back, and um, it'll it'll officially feel like summer. That's Fair. for sure. That's yeah. That yeah. that is that was always the sign that summer was there. Was when like Fantasmic was like nightly, and and you were and you know just hearing the music out by the the water and everything. I don't know. It was definitely a sign of summer. You're right about that. All coming together for yeah. us after <laughs> years years of waiting we finally got it again well moving along now downtown disney is about to undergo some major changes already experiencing so much of it down on its west end near the disneyland hotel if you follow our disneyland updates on the channel then you've seen it firsthand week to week and month to month all the demolition that has been going on on the west end of downtown disney and how they've completely annihilated the old amc theater building and uh that starbucks down there sugar boo is gone i know katrina oh sugar boo oh, oh no who could have ever foreseen uh, sugar boo closing Oof. not i <laughs> or the soap shop yeah what the heck was up with the soap shop on the back of the it wasn't yeah. even in you didn't even have to go through security it was uh, what is so that? painful what to is, see what, why would anybody be like, oh, yeah, this is a great idea to build my shop here? I don't, I don't know. think they had a choice. Anyway. They really won in, in that. They really won. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. just sad about the theater. I like ducking in there when it was, like, too hot and just watch a movie. Yeah, I miss having uh, yeah. a theater in downtown Disney to go to that no one else will be in. I never yep. got to yeah. use I my A-list that. there. The only time I've been in there was to see Tomorrowland when they had the yeah. AP uh, thing when they like gave out the annual pass holders when they actually did stuff for annual pass holders. It was a very nice theater. Very, very uh, plush yeah. theater. We and never went in it very Yeah, much. very few people yeah. ever did, so I understand why they got rid of it. Uh, Earl of Sandwich, we understand, will be returning in a capacity, at least in the short term. Time. Yeah, mm-hmm. so crossing our fingers there. And uh, there's actually locations in LA. I had no idea until recently. Oh, Earl of Sandwich. Like, there's a downtown LA location. There's uh, actually stumbled upon, I think, one in Porter Ranch. Oh. There's a location there, and I, I was know. like, was nice. Yeah. Build one in my backyard, please. I miss good old Earl. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, him and his sandwich. His sandwich. He was the Earl of Sandwich. I don't know if you knew that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great logo, too. SFGate.com reports the changes have been underway for months in downtown Disney, including the recent demolition of the AMC Theater, as we just mentioned. But the company hadn't announced the plan for the cleared space. Now we know uh, what it will entail. New restaurants, new shopping, and green space for relaxation outside of the parks with an attached stage for entertainment. Disneyland Resort President Ken Potrock announced this earlier uh, this past month and at the end of last month, excuse me, April 27th. So among those new restaurants is is Din Tai Fung, the widely popular Chinese restaurant chain known for all kinds of treats, which started in Taiwan and has locations throughout Southern California, including two in Los Angeles. Michelin-starred chef Carlos Gaetan will open two Mexican restaurants as well, one in the former space for Catal, uh, which I think is Longo Purdue, uh, mm-hmm. something goes into that space because it doesn't get utilized the way that it probably should. And uh, in the space for Uva Bar, uh, which is right smack in the middle of downtown Disney. All of downtown Disney, including restaurants that will continue to operate like Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen, will get a makeover into a mid-century modern aesthetic. And the Paradise Pier Hotel, one of Disneyland's three on property right, uh, accommodations, rather, is also slated to undergo renovations and will be rethemed into a Pixar hotel with a dedicated walkway to California Adventure Park. And Katrina, lots of images have been released since uh, this news that Downtown Disney is sort of getting this overhaul. Uh, A new look, new options coming our way. Your reaction? Mm. Yes. Oh. (laughs) Have we seen the art? You just looked at it for Jazz Kitchen (laughs) and it makes me so mad. I'm really happy. Listen, I'm so happy that they're adding more things to downtown Disney. It is in dire need of more restaurants, more shops, just widening it out because there's always just like a like a bottleneck everywhere. That's great. But when you like take away a beautiful aesthetic of Jazz Kitchen and make it look like a fancy Whole Foods, 
it makes me so irritated because it already had a history. It already had a story. It was already modeled over the, about like New Orleans Square, you know, type thing. And now they're Californianizing it and making it look like a like bland. Yeah. And they're gonna make downtown Disney all bland. And it's just make it just. I feel like every restaurant wants his character, and like the reason why they're doing this is probably because if they, you know, like if their leases or whatever are up, it's easier for them to bring in someone else in. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to just make it look like a bland white apartment, like just everything's just clean, and then they're able to like just bring in someone new if they can't hold up the lease. And that breaks my heart because, like, you know, Tortilla Joe's. I love Tortilla Joe's. It's just so fun. You know, it's gonna end because they're already bringing another Mexican restaurant in. And I get it. Michelin star seems really great, really cool. Um, and I'm and I and I know Catal really needed help because, like, a lot of people kind of forget Catal even exists. And we love Uva Bar. Like, when you go in, it's just they always have like decent food and you know decent drinks and stuff. And so I'm glad that they're gonna be utilizing more space. But when they're getting rid of like. You know, Tortilla Joe's, what are they going to bring in there? And and I, I hope it's like actual better foods and not like bad shops like Sugar Boo. Like no one need. I'm sorry. If anybody <laughs> loves Sugar Boo, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but it's, it was pointless to where it was at. Like I we needed more like fast food options like Disney Springs has. Bring right? us Chicken Guy. Please. Right. Like Chicken yeah. Guy. Chicken Polite Guy would be Pig, incredible. The Poutine Place. Mm-hmm. Like bring us these easy foods because I feel like it's easier than having like multiple restaurants. Like, who goes to like? No one goes to Splitsville. Yeah. No one. I've never seen any. You know, it's a busy day when there's really people there. Overpriced. It is very really overpriced. It is just like yeah. like you and me. Our burger would be like twenty eight dollars, and you can't even have fries. You have a salad, and they Ugh. charge you extra for the salad. Oh, yeah. So yes. it was like twenty eight dollars. I'm not even kidding. And it I was recently discovered Chicken My Guy. Allergy. Chicken Guy has gluten free buns. I had no idea. Oh yeah. And I was like, I was oh with the gosh. chicken tenders. Yes, though. I love that grilled tenders are the it's best. It's so nice. Like yeah. it's just we need these types of things that are like accessible and easy. And then mm-hmm. also like I mean, it's never gonna be like Disney Springs because Springs. California rules and stuff have laws with like open container, pot, like you know the lot like all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure that's why. They don't want that for downtown Disney, but it would just like be so nice if they're able to do something like the Anaheim Packing House and just have multiple different types of small places you can go. You know, you go over here, you if go over here, you go here, and we meet in a mutual spot. They could do they that. Could have. <laughs> there was a point like it was just it just it's crazy, and I'm really I. Right. So there art. <laughs> so it could change, right? So they're showing all this art. It can also it can change at any point. But it just makes me like, why touch Jazz Kitchen? Yeah. Just leave it alone. Yeah, leave Jazz Kitchen. Like, what are you gonna do with it? What are they gonna do with the fun ban at the bottom? Are they gonna get rid of it? Yes. Because like, <laughs> it's not in the concept art. So it just it just breaks my heart. Like, it's just not it's not needed. And like, it, just it leave it alone. Yeah, it makes me sad too, especially when you think about Disney Springs again and how when they built Disney Springs, they created an entire story, story around yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Each building, each restaurant is part of the story. Like Morimoto's was like a bottling plant. Like uh, uh, the, the 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 planet Hollywood is a is an observatory. Like just all these cool stories for this like World's Fair type of thing that they used to do there. And uh, then you look at downtown Disney and you're like, oh, it's um, it's a mall. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's like just, just every a mall like all the other places you can go to. There's nothing Disney or special about it anymore. They need to so. bring more. Like and then like a cooks and dumplings. Oh, Ooh. looks at Dublin, please. Oh, yeah. Like, come on. Like, we need, like, more, like, less burgers, more, like, barbecue, like, mm-hmm. like kind of, like, Irish fare. It's just it's just fun and different, you know what I mean? And keep it lively like Disney Springs. Like, I need, I need that. I don't want sugar boo. <laughs> <Don't. laughs> <laughs> so shocked. Do not disappoint. Just give Katrina me another Starbucks on the other side. It'll be fine. You know, hopefully. Controversially, I'd like a Joffrey's. It's a, oh. I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> I feel like they should have that, right? With I'm like the little don't. etching thing that they have mm-hmm. on top that they can do with the foam. They need to bring that here at Disneyland so we can put I our pictures on it. I think they at least have a cart somewhere in downtown Disney. You would oh. think, yes, right? Because it's everywhere in Disney World. I love oh. their chives. Their chives are my favorite. Mm-hmm. I have never had a chai from Joffrey's, but I will now. It sounds delightful. It is very delightful. Yes, I must get myself one. Uh, well, you let us know. Are you disappointed with all the downtown Disney changes? We'd love to hear from you on that. 
Speaking of disappointment, Disney CEO Bob Chapek uh, earlier this past week, well, he returned to his alma mater, Indiana University, to receive an honorary doctorate and deliver a commencement speech. In it, he gave a heartfelt account of growing up in Hammond, Indiana, his family's yearly trips to Disney World, and his time at the university studying microbiology. It was not without its missteps, however, Deadline reports, as they say that in the speech, the Disney CEO compared himself to Iron Man and mistook Disneyland's motto for that of Disney World, saying, quote, IU was my ticket to a new life. I was kind of desperate, desperate to demonstrate my worthiness and desperate not to waste a dime of my parents' money on a school that was frankly testing my limits at the time. But that desperation turned to determination, and my dream of defying expectations and the odds took over. Just like that, just like how Iron Man draws his energy from the arc reactor, I get a thump from my drive to prove myself every single day. It's a lifetime power supply that pushes me through doubts, difficulties, and around those who underestimate kids from the region." Close quote. While Chapek ran Disney Parks division for five years before taking over as CEO in 2020, in his speech last weekend, he mistakenly referred to Walt Disney World as the happiest place on Earth. That, of course, is Disneyland's motto. Disney World is the most magical place on Earth. And Tyler, Bob Chapek, a superhero among us, uh, can't get his own company's motto right even when it's written down. I salute him, <laughs> sir. Uh, I mean, he, he, you know, superhero is a is a great way to put it. He's very special. Mm. Um, but, you know, I just think I have to say I've just always kind of felt like he has no he has he doesn't seem to actually care that much about his own product. Like it really just kind of comes off that way where he doesn't have the drive that I feel like even like. Bob Iger and Michael Eisner had where they actually so were more, excited. So more of an Obadiah Stane ironmonger. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I just feel that he doesn't care about this product very much. He's doing it because he makes a lot of money. He's He, he was selected to be the CEO and I just get the feeling that uh, he has no heart in this situation. And uh, saying things like this even though it's kind of a small mistake, probably somebody else wrote this speech for him and then nobody like did the, nobody like yeah. figured out like, oh, it was the wrong, this is the wrong uh, slogan, but. He's just the CEO. Uh, that's the thing is like, <laughs> he, he, he should catch things like this. Like he should care about his product at the end of the day. It shouldn't be like all about making money. He should make, he should want to make smiles happen. And I don't feel like he cares that well, much Well, for about those that. children at Indiana University, no doubt, yeah. lots of smiles were to be had. Oh, did he I'm sure. Even write this, or did he hire someone to do it, and they just oh, purposely no, I'm sure. put that in someone to make him look someone like else, somebody idiot. else wrote it for him. I'm, I'm sure. Iron Man. Yeah, Iron um, I don't know. He, you know, my sister went to Indiana University, but oh. um, she seemed to have an easy time with it, even though Chapex said it was hard. Home but. of the Chapex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Oh. Whoa, come to this happy place. Welcome. 